Hello students, welcome to the lecture on organizational behavior and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Number one, explain the meaning of organizational behavior. Two, define the nature of organizational behavior. Three, understand the determinants of organizational behavior. Four, describe the administration and organizational behavior. Five, Discuss the behavior model for organizational efficiency. Let's start with the concept of organizational behavior. The study of organizational behavior is very interesting and challenging too. It is related to individuals, group of people working together in teams. The study becomes more challenging when situational factors interact. The study of organizational behavior relates to the expected behavior of an individual in the organization. No two individuals are likely to behave in the same manner in a particular work situation. It is the predictability of a manager about the expected behavior of an individual. There are no absolutes in human behavior. It is the human factor that is contributory to the productivity. Hence, the study of human behavior is important. Great importance, therefore, must be attached to the study. Researchers, management practitioners, psychologists and social scientists must understand the very credentials of an individual, his background, social framework, educational update, impact of social groups and other situational factors on behavior. Organizational behavior is an applied behavioral science that emerged from the disciplines of psychology, sociology, anthropology, political science and economics. Let us now discuss the meaning of organizational behavior. Organizational behavior is made out of two words, organization and behavior. Organization as two or more individuals who are interacting with each other within a deliberately structured setup and working in an interdependent way to achieve some common objective. Organizations play a major role in pure lives. We possibly cannot think of a single moment in our lives when we are not depending on organizations in some form or the other. Behavior. Now, it is the behavior of the people working in an organization to achieve common goals or objectives. Organization comprises of people with different attitudes, cultures, beliefs, norms and values. Organizational behavior can be defined as the study of what people think, feel and do in and around organizations. The value of organizational behavior is that it isolates important aspects of the manager's job and offers specific perspective on the human side of management. People as organizations, people as resources, people as people. Organizational behavior is a term related to the study of individual and group dynamics in an organizational setting as well as the nature of all the organizations themselves. Whenever people interact in organizations, many factors come into play. The organizational behavior is very interesting and challenging too. It is related to individuals, group of people working together in teams. The study becomes more challenging when situational factors interact. No two individuals are likely to behave in the same manner in a particular work situation. My husband, Gian Paolo Lombardo, works for a factory which manufactures luxury travel luggage. We went for a vacation in California, but he spends most of his time with his phone. It's frustrating! No movies or meals goes without him being hunched over his phone. He really needs to go to rehab. Hi, I'm Iron C, the head of government bond trading division. I've seen stock market from all-time highs to recession levels. I hardly sleep at night and wake up several times to check the market status. I've been doing this for years, but I'm still excited to go to work. Here's Tony Cruz speaking. I am a managing director at Capital Alliance Partners and raises funds for the real estate investments. I often fly across the group, Costa Rica, Hawaii, to prospective clients. Traveling more than 30,000 miles per year makes me often sleeping on planes and coping with jet lag. My girlfriend have a back shadow too. It's hard to maintain this relationship. Well, hello there. I'm Debbie Clark. 
I work for MTV as a vice president. I often travel around the globe to promote the channel. My day consists of waking up at 6.30 a.m., responding to numerous messages. I'm lucky if I get to spend time with my son, but I need to get back to work until midnight. Everyone would love to have this job, so that's motivating. Looking at the scenes before, is it the characteristics of job or the personality of the individuals that make the jobs satisfying? The characteristics of the jobs, for example, to work over 60 hours a week with constant travelling along with little time for the rest of the activities is not appealing by itself. Therefore, the personality of the individuals which is specifically making these jobs attractive for them. For example, those who have a positive course of evaluation, in other words, those who have firm belief in their inner values are those who can take on such stressful tasks. Apart from this, the risk takers and extroversive personalities may also find such jobs attractive because they like to take risks and to work in a busy environment. Nevertheless, characteristics of these jobs such as autonomy, prestige, ability to experience different cultures, travelling on company patriots, pay co-workers and the sociable nature of these works could increase the level of job satisfaction. All these involve in higher employee involvement and engagement which are all signs of job satisfaction. For example, Iron C had spent 10 years except for only a few days she did not want to attend a job. This proves that she is experiencing a very high level of job satisfaction. Job satisfaction will increase the employee's performance. For example, responding to over 500 mails is only a daily task that David Clark perform, which for others may be tedious. On the other hand, Jean Paolo does not ignore a phone call even if he is having a meal or watching a movie with his wife. This shows the high level of performance. The citizenship behavior is a very high level of job satisfaction where they talk positively about the organization, help others and go beyond the normal expectations in their job. Their job satisfaction will also increase their citizenship behavior as we can see from the example of David Clark, who wakes up so early in the morning only to reply the emails that came over the course of the night. Employee turnover explains the percentage of staff resigning from the company for various reasons. With high satisfaction, employee turnover would fall. We can see this from Iron C who says she can count on her fingers on one hand the days she did not want to come to work. This means that when the employee is having a high satisfaction, the turnover would fall and that the employee would love to attend the work. The statement, there are plenty of people who would love to have this job, they are knocking on the door all the time, stated by David Clark gives insight that he believes that the society accepts his work and that they believe his job title is prestigious. Therefore, it is very motivating to hold a job which is respected by the society. He will be motivated to improve his performance on a constant basis to outperform and challenge any potential candidate who would want to claim his title. Therefore, he is highly satisfied and has a high perceived organization support POS. This is evident through his organizational citizenship behavior, lower levels of tardiness and good customer service. Therefore, his perception that he has a job many others desire would definitely contribute to his job satisfaction. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the nature and the scope of organizational behavior. Scope of organizational behavior is increasing day by day due to rapidly changing nature and environment of business. The changing technology, political and social structure, culture and values, economical and many factors are responsible for new structure and work of environment organizations. In this new era, Business manager and competition manager should concentrate on changing aspects such as employees' nature, reaction and response to different situations of organization. Organizational behavior is an applied behavioral science that is built on contributions from a number of behavioral disciplines such as psychology is a study of human behavior which tries to identify the characteristics of individuals and provides an understanding why an individual behaves in a particular way. Sociology. Sociology is the study of social behavior, relationships among social groups and societies, and the maintenance of social order. The main focus of attention is on the social system. Social psychology. Social psychology is the study of human behavior in the context of social situations. 
This essentially addresses the problem of understanding the typical behavioral patterns to be expected from an individual when he takes part in a group. Anthropology. Anthropology is the science of mankind and the study of human behavior as a whole. The main focus of attention is on the cultural systems, beliefs, customs, ideas and values within a group of society and the comparison of behavior among different cultures. Economics. Any organization to survive and sustain must be aware of the economic viability of their effort. This applies even to the non-profit and voluntary organizations as well. Influences on behavior. The variables outlined provide parameters within which a number of interrelated dimensions can be identified to the individual, the group, the organization and the environment which collectively influences behavior in work organizations. Individual organizations are made up of the individual members. The individual is a central feature of organizational behavior, whether acting in isolation or as part of a group. In response to expectations of the organization or as a result of the influences of the external environment. Group. Group exists in all organizations and are essential to the working and performance. The organization comprises groups of people and almost everyone in an organization will be a member of one or more groups. Informal groups arise from the social needs of people within the organization. Organization individuals and groups interact within the structure of the formal organization. Structure is created to establish relationships between individuals and groups, to provide order and systems and to direct the efforts of the organization into goal-seeking activities. Mastery of basic objective knowledge. Objective knowledge in any field of study is developed through basic and applied research. Acquiring objective knowledge requires the cognitive mastery of theories, conceptual models and research findings. Skill development. The organizational behavior requires skill development, organizational behavior and the mastery of abilities essential to successful functioning in organizations. The essential skills identified by the U.S. Department of Labor are resource management skills such as time management, information management skills such as data interpretation, goals of organizational behavior. Many companies strive to understand the behavior of the employees, so they often study the turnover rate, productivity and employee attitudes before making any changes. One of the main goals of organizational behavior, OB, is to explain the behavior of employees to determine why they act the way they do. Let's know the determinants of organizational behavior. Organizational behavior is the analysis and application of knowledge about how people act within organizations. According to John W. Newstrom and Keith Davis, there are three primary determinants of behavior on which small companies focus when studying organizational behavior. Employee dynamics, available resources, and work environments. People. People are the main components of any organization that has to be managed. Every individual has a personal goal to be achieved. The structure. There are two types of organizations, formal and informal. Informal organizations do not have a specified structure. Formal organizations are building based upon the objective set for it. Organizational structure in such organization is hierarchical in nature, with people at each level having their own objectives, which contributes towards fulfillment of overall organizational objectives. In such organization, people at lower levels report to higher level managers. Technology. Managing technology is an important job of any management. It is an important element of any unit. Selection of technology, procurement, installation, operation and maintenance is important and no compromise should be made in procuring latest or advanced technology. Processes. Management of processes and its interdependence is very crucial to high productivity and higher job satisfaction. What is important for a manager is to ensure high morale of the workforce. In defense services, it is the quality of leadership that motivates troops to achieve near impossible tasks where everything appears to be going wrong. Various role models assist leaders in identifying as to which process, method or approach would be suitable to mold subordinates in suitable frame that may require by any organization. 
Nothing motivates workers better if give them their entitlements in full and train them to take up higher jobs. By doing so, manager must develop and build an organizational culture that will bind employees to a common cultural bond. During day-to-day -day functions, managers must be transparent and maintain a high degree of value system and display ethical behavior. There are no shortcuts to this and will pay rich dividends in times to come. External Environment What we have so far discussed is various components of an organization that should be managed properly. External environment also plays an important role in managing. When we talk about managing people in the organization, what we have to study and manage is the influence of culture and its impact on the individual. A manager should examine as to how he is going to come up with the changes. Study of external environment is very wide and encompasses economic, cultural, social, government rules and regulations, legal aspects, political climate, demographics and its impact. If one scans the external environment that is prevailing in global context, one will find that individuals are racing to catch up the upper class as it relates to standards of living, material possession, higher education, attempt to copy western culture, food habits, dressing pattern and the like. Beauty parlors, pubs and cyber cafes around each corner are an ample evidence of the impact of external environment. Administration and Organizational Behavior Organizations are collections of interacting and interrelated human and non-human resources working towards a common goal or a set of goals within the framework of structured relationships. Organizational behavior is concerned with all aspects of how organizations influence the behavior of individuals and how individuals in turn influence organizations. Organizational behavior is an interdisciplinary field that draws freely from a number of the behavioral sciences, including anthropology, psychology, sociology, and many others. This traditional closed systems view of organizations made substantial contributions to the theory of organizational design. At the same time, for analytical reasons, organizations came to be viewed as precise and complex machines. In this framework, human beings were reduced to components of the organizational machine. Organizations as systems. Organizations are systems and subsystems of behavior that are interrelated, interdependent and interacting rather than chartable, linear or static structures. Organizations are dynamic, living entities that have been put together to accomplish some type of purpose they are goal-oriented. The number and variety of parts to an organization can be truly astonishing. In an attempt to provide order, the organization establishes many of the rules, roles and behaviors that individuals will and should follow to maintain the organizations. To a large extent, individuals and groups determine the development of an organization. An organization's structure, tasks and methods evolve out of the history of the organization's transactions with its changing members and environment. For our purposes, how these components work in relation to the each other is the vital question. The arrangement of the interrelated parts creates the system. The system's perspective is potentially seductive for looking at organizations because a systemized pattern of behavior is practically a synonym for the concept of organization. More properly, an organization should be viewed as a system because it is a sum total of the various parts and how those parts interact determine the output and the growth of the process. Several terms are important to this concept. First, the organization as a system is a perspective or framework towards organizations and not necessarily a theory. Our consideration is with the integrated whole of the organization which is made up of interacting and interrelated parts. Thus, the whole can range in size from a partnership to Microsoft. The goal is to understand the interacting parts of this system. The tragedy of the commons demonstrates the interrelated and interdependent nature of systems. In the 1800s in England, villages created a common grazing area in the middle of the village for everyone to use, which increased security for the livestock and convenience for the owners. Some villagers, seeking greater wealth or status, added to the livestock, 
beginning a cycle where other villages also added livestock. Soon the commons was overgrazed, making the commons unusable. Second, all organizations exist within an environment and are both created and controlled by the environment. Organizations involve a pattern of recurrent activities of input, transformation and output. Resources or inputs, energy, matter, money, materials, personnel or information are imported from the environment. These are transformed or changed through various processes, means, methods, procedures, how to do it, information or techniques in some other fashion or another. And the resulting outputs, products, information or services are exported back into the environment. Openness. All human organizations function in varying states of openness or responsiveness to the environment because their boundaries are permeable and they constantly are engaged in interactions. When the organization tends towards isolation from its environment, it moves towards a closed status. Actually, organizations cannot remain isolated for long because they are highly dependent on the consumer, supplier and often government for their growth, stability or survival. Feedback. In order to maintain a steady state, an open system needs adaptive processes to receive information about its activities, which is called feedback. Feedback represents the ability of the system to generate and utilize evaluative information. Entropy. Living systems tend towards entropy, disorganization, stagnation or chaos. Human organizations are capable of resisting entropy because they can maintain and increase the supply of energy, information and level of organization. An organization must provide tangible and intangible outputs to its environment that enable it to receive the inputs necessary to its survival. Systems cannot survive in the absence of negative feedback or information. Example, customer complaints. That enables them to detect deviations from course. Example, excellent service. An organization maintains a dynamic equilibrium, steady state, which includes the basic character of the organization manifested in recurring cycles of events. Organizational subsystems. In all organizations, two internal subsystems continually operate. One consists of the group within the organization and the other consists of the dyadic or individual relationships. The system called the organization also has formal structures with definite lines of responsibility and authority. Rational objectives. Whenever people are gathered together in an organization, it is for some specific purpose. These objective goals or things to do are established by the mandate behind the organization's existence and usually are divided into attainable subtasks or short-range targets. Methodology. Organizations also are structured around some ways of doing the tasks through training, tools, background, expertise and procedures. This is, for all practical purposes, the definition of technology. Management System Integrators All organizations have a subsystem that organizes and controls the other subsystems, causing them to interact and resulting in increased effectiveness of the total organization. Interdependence All of these factors tell us that to make a change in one subsystem requires that some consideration be made regarding the implications for the other subsystems. Behavior Model for Organizational Efficiency Organizational behavior is a study and application of managerial skills and knowledge to people in the organization to investigate individual and group behavior. Various concepts and models in the field of organizational behavior attempt to identify not only the human behavior but also modify the attitude and promote skills so that they can act more effectively. This is done scientifically. Therefore, organizational behavior field is a scientific discipline. Leaders must look for indicators, effects of individual behavior and of groups in any organization. Indicators have a root cause beneath. As a leader, it is that symptom which must be evaluated and cause of human behavior established so that if the behavior is good, the manager can establish the norms of behavior. If the behavior is not conducive to achieve the organizational objective, then suitable alternative model can be applied to channelize individual behavior towards an appropriate organizational value system and thus individual behavior modified. 
An organization has three basic elements, namely people, structure and technology. An organization must have suitable organizational structure with appropriate number of tier and reporting system properly explained. Principle of unity of command, delegation of authority and responsibility, formulation of objectives and its allotment to various groups is very important so that workers achieve a required level of job satisfaction. How will training increase your organization's efficiency? Well, I believe training is absolutely essential for the success of any company. I personally at my company invest in training for the job related skills because it empowers our staff to do a great job and deliver a standard product. Because you need to have policies and procedures that will ensure you as a company deliver your service or your product in a standardized way every time so you know your clients are going to be happy. Now to do this though you have to train and by training you can't have somebody out there who doesn't know how to swim go out and rescue somebody that's drowning. So training them, giving them the tools, the resources, and everything that's at their disposal makes them stronger, more confident, and able to deliver great service and a quality product every time. Leader must be able to describe, understand, predict, and control individual behavior in the organization. Describe. Study of organizational behavior is based on scientific methods which have been applied on human beings. Understand. Leaders must understand human behavior as to why people behave in particular manner and try to identify reasons so that corrective actions can be taken. Predict. By frequent closer interaction, a leader is in a position to identify the nature of workers. Some are more productive while the others are tardy and disruptive. In such a situation, a leader should be able to handle each individual differently so that his or her actions can be channelized to higher productivity. Control. Managers in the organizations should train their subordinates continuously, aim being development of skills, promotion of productivity and improvement of individual behavior. It is a continuous process on the part of the manager. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Organizational behavior, OB, is an applied behavioral science that emerged from the disciplines of psychology, sociology, anthropology, political science, and economics. Psychology is the study of human behavior which tries to identify the characteristics of individuals and provides an understanding why an individual behaves in a particular way. Organizational structure in such organization is hierarchical in nature, with people at each level having their own objectives, which contributes towards fulfillment of overall organizational objectives. Organizations are collections of interacting and interrelated human and non-human resources working towards a common goal or a set of goals within the framework of structured relationships. Sociology is the study of social behavior, relationships among social groups and societies, and the maintenance of social order. The main focus of attention is on the social system.